blessings and favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessings and favor. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming on. Blessings and favor. Hallelujah.
He's worthy, 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 worthy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is to be adored. Hallelujah. He is to be worshipped. Hallelujah. We thank him. We thank him on today. Hallelujah. We come to bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We come to bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify him. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 We worship him on today. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah. He is so worthy. Hallelujah. Above all else, I am a worshiper. Hallelujah. I am a worshiper. Hallelujah. And so I start my lives off with worship. Hallelujah. Because that also usher into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I just bless the Lord. I don't just come on just to be coming on. Hallelujah. I come on when the Lord tell me to come on. And I just enjoy um, coming on and sharing, but I also love coming on and just worshiping. Hallelujah. I am a worshiper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we give God praise. We give him honor. Hallelujah. On today, I thank you all for coming on. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And as I always say, blessings and favor to you all. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is doing some great things. Hallelujah. And we exalt him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So I just come on on today. Hallelujah. Blessings and favor to y'all that's coming on and that we'll be coming on after the um the replay hallelujah to watch the replay um i honor you on today i honor all of you i honor the grace that's upon your lives and what god is doing in you and through you in this hour and this time that we're in and just coming on doing some sharing you know, I talk about um, a lot about lately talking about character. If you've been watching any of my posts, um, I've been posting about character. I've been posting about um, gifts. And a lot of times we, we don't really focus in on talking about character because we're always talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I believe really God, um, really, God really was speaking to me, um, about coming on doing a live on today about character and about gifts. Cause again, a lot of times what we do, we talk about, talk about a lot about the gifts. We talk about, um, primarily really we focus in a lot about, um, the gift of prophecy and the office of prophets. And I'm going to also share in that particular area on today as well. But I really want to zoom in on the area of character. Um, because God is really um, raising us up in the area of character. I'm going to also, as I always share, I always share my years of experience um, because a lot of times what we do, we share um, those areas that, that we've been in ministry in, that we've done some type of capacity of ministry, but we have to understand that God is more concerned. Listen, God is more concerned about our character than it is, than he is about our gifts. Also, he... Uh, Although he has given us great gifts, he has, has placed some great things on the inside of us, but we have to understand there is a balance. There's a balance. And when God puts us in, in a level of, um, of, of a, what I call our preparation, which is our process stage, God begin to take us in these areas of, of, um, of just, um, processing also in the area of our character. And so once again, hallelujah. Thank you for coming on. Uh, once again, I just want to begin to really share, even in my own experiences of how God began to, um, really deal with me in the area of, of coming into ministry and then 
and God began to deal with me in the area of business because I believe that, you know, on both ends with, you know, some of us is not only um, called into the area of, of ministry, but we also operate in the area of business. And so, you know, we have to really um, begin to expound on this area in this hour because of where God is, is sending us and, excuse me, and bringing us into it. We have to understand something here also is this. We have to understand that um, that there is a level of blessings. There's a level of blessings and there, there are doors of opportunities that God wants us to walk in. But until we understand um, how how to allow God to deal with the area of, of our character, we will never walk into those areas of blessings and we will never walk into those areas of favor and those areas of, of open door. We have to understand that even though the scripture says that our gift will make room for us and bring us before great men, but we have to understand that it's our character that also keep us there as we have heard in time past. So we have to begin to allow God, if we're going to really move into the grace that God has called us to walk in in this hour and this time that we're in. We have to understand that God is going to deal with us in the area of our character. And so over the years, you know, I was just like I was, I had been sharing some time ago. I always share areas of, um, even when I was in the, in the area of business, being in the areas of business. And that was one of my main areas where God my beginning stages of when God was really um, had me in a place of preparation. Understand that that your place of preparation is necessary. It's your training ground. It's not where God has you for that time. It's not where God um, have have is, is going to allow you to stay, should I say? But it's your time of training. It's your time of preparation, especially when God have great things in store for you, and you have a great um, great assignment and a great mantle upon your life, you have to understand something that God will begin to take you through different areas of process. And the process don't always, does not feel good. I'm not going to say don't, does not always feel good. It does not feel good at all. Blessings and favor. Thank you all for coming on. It doesn't, it does not feel good at all. It is necessary for us to have those moments that God is dealing with our character. And in those moments when there are times that God may not allow us to walk, um, to do, um, a certain level of ministry because we have to understand that God will, will not allow you to operate above your gift. He will not, excuse me, he will not allow you to operate above your character. And so in our areas of character, we have to really be dealt with because some of us can, can have great gifts like I had posted the other day. Some of us can have great gifts, but at the same time, we can be nasty. We can, we can be, un, you know, not trusted, you know, and so God, in order for God to really use us like he want to, our character have to be in alignment. Amen. Our character has to be in alignment. Thank you all for coming on. Bless you, sissy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so I'm going to begin to even share, um, again, sharing my own areas of, of experience, my own areas of how God began to bring me into the area of, of walking in a prophet. That's when I'm going, that's what I'm going to share first. And then I'm going to talk about the areas of business because it's very important. The areas of business of, of your giftings that's in the business world as well. And why it is very extremely, I'm going to say that again, why it's extremely very important. And I remember when I first started out in ministry years ago, how God began to, it, it was, <laughs> you know, my process was very strong. My process was very, it was very hard, I would say. It was very hard because God had to, you know, God had to break off the old, you know, in order to, to, to align me into bring me into the new. So when God began to release me before God began to release me into ministry, I remember spending at least three years where God was really dealing with the areas of, of the things I have came out of when I, when I was out in the world. And so God really began to really uh, pull me aside and people, you know, you have to understand something here. People don't understand your process. Come on. People will not understand your process. People will look at you like, oh my God, why are you over there? You don't look. No. The process between is between you and God. <laughs> you know, so everyone is, if, if they're not called, if people are not called to minister to you during your time of process, during your time of preparation, then, 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 you know, then they're, they're not going to play the part that they're supposed to play in your process 
time, you know, and so, you know, you have to guard against allowing everybody in during your time of process. Be careful in allowing the wrong people in during your time of process and preparation because you need what God will usually do because God is so God is so faithful and God is very intentional about about the call that's on your life about the mantle and where God is bringing you to God is extremely intentional about who he surrounds you with God does not surround you with everybody <laughs> This is where we got to use wisdom. And, and God, you know, over the years, I've seen God do some remarkable things. He's God has done some remarkable things. There are people I can say that God has placed around me during my during my time of, of, of preparation that have poured into my life. That it's like now I'm actually the things that they have poured into my life. I'm like, God, I'm thankful because I've been blessed over the years. And you have to really be thankful for those that God has brought in your path. that have raised you in, in, in areas of your character that did not um, that did not sugarcoat. I did not have any. Anybody, anybody, whether it was in the business arena or whether it was in the ministry arena, nobody played with my flesh. They told me exactly what it is. If, if I had an attitude, they told me you got attitude, shake that devil off of you. And they just kept it moving. But they gave me truth. We're living in a time now where people don't want to don't want to be told the truth. But we want we want to be um we want, we have itching ears. We want people to tell us what we want to hear. But God is not dealing with that area of our flesh. God is working on us so that we can be able to move and operate in the totality of the glory in which he is bringing us into. And that take walking in character. It take walking in character. Amen. It take walking into character. So once again, when I first started in ministry, God immediately began to pull me aside, began to pull me into the word. Why? Because the word of God, the word of God break off things out of your life that need to be broken off. So when God is bringing you to, especially when he's bringing you to a place of deliverance, when he's bringing you to a place of, of setting you free from different things so that you will not be able to walk in, in those particular things when you enter into ministry. Understand something about this. This is something else we don't talk about. Understand, because I remember the days, I came from the days when we didn't, we didn't stand in the pulpit with no own sin in our lives. We didn't, where I came from, we didn't, they, they did not allow people to stand in the pulpit. If you won't write, there was, there was a, a level of conviction that's, that was laid upon our heart. If we won't write, mm -hmm. we would, we did not get in the pulpit. Come on. We didn't get in the pulpit. Why? Because we had a level of reverence for God. Hallelujah. We want ministering out of a place of knowing that we have stuff in our life that we know that we needed to get rid of. That we knew we had to get rid of. So again, starting from, again, talking about that area of when, how God had brought me into the area of the prophetic and how he began to usher me in different areas of even uh, walking in character and walking in, um, walking in purity as a prophet. You know, before I, before God released me into the area of walking as an apostle, God didn't really speak to me as walking as an apostle at the beginning of my, uh, beginning of the ministry. When I was called into the ministry, I automatically walked into the area of the prophetic. I have a prophetic grace upon my life, a prophetic gifting upon my life. And so God really began to bring me into the area of being in the house for, for first before God released me into anywhere else, God had me around people that was also prophetic, that was able to to be able to judge the, the prophecy or the prophetic word that was coming out of my mouth to those that was in the house, in the house of, of different prophets, because the house was really a prophetic house. You know, many, many that was in the house operate in the place of the prophetic, operate out of the gift of the prophetic. And so I had people around me that really harnessed that, but that, that gift on the inside of me. But at the same time, you know, I was still walking in an area of character. What I mean by character, that there were times that I had to, not there was times, but there was many times where I had to, you know, just being faithful, being faithful to the ministry, showing up on time, leave, you know, leaving when, when nobody else was, you know, 
know when the, being the last person leaves, being faithful, being found faithful to the ministry. Because one thing you have to understand something is that if you're going to walk in ministry, and this is something that we really have to put back into place in the body of Christ as believers, as we go, as we walk in ministry, that we just don't pay attention to the gift. And yes, somebody can may have, can prophesy the house down, and they can prophesy in accuracy, but we don't look at the areas of the of of their character. How how do they how do they how's their attitude? How are they between you know in the midst of of of, of the congregation? How do they treat other members of the church? Are they coming to check the tear up the church? Are they bringing forth the church split? Well. Those are things that we have to begin to look at when we call when people are called into the prophetic. How is their character? Do they do they cause strife amongst the other believers? We gotta look at all of this. We gotta look at we're so quick to give people a mic. I know this is a corrective word, and everybody don't like this, but this is okay. We okay, we we quick to give people, excuse me, a, a, a prophetic word, but at the same time, we don't we don't want to check nobody. We don't want to check nobody in their character. We don't want to tell nobody you late, you know, you can't speak today. You you can't speak in this pulpit because you you know you don't you know because there are times when people know, yeah, you are you know you and you a guest speaker at a certain ministry and you you decide that you want to come in late when you knew a whole month that you was going to be the guest speaker of, of, of a certain um of a certain day or at a certain ministry but you decide I want to come in late no that is that is out of character that is not that is disrespecting the house as a prophet you have to begin to to really um you have to begin to respect and honor the house and you have to honor hallelujah the leader of the house I don't want to hear this, <laughs> but to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Because we got to get back into, into doing things the right way. We got to bring forth. Hallelujah. Begin to bring forth order in the house because there's too much that's out of order. We're, we're too consumed with the gifts, but we're not, we're not allowing God to really, because the, the scripture says that you will know them by their fruit, that character, Hallelujah. not by their gifts. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not by their gifts. I know people that are gifted. They're strongly gifted, but their character can't be trusted. Can't be trusted. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we, so again, we have to begin to tell people or not to tell, but we have to begin to really, really sit back. It, it, you know, during the time of training, during the time of process, you know, during the time of your preparation, that that is the time that is that is the time where um where you're being watched per se you have people that 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 have gone down the road that you've been <laughs> you know and and they're observing you they're observing your character you know they're observing how you act they're observing how you treating a person. And it's the same way on, on in the business world, on the job. Before they can promote you, they watch you for a while. Come on, somebody. They watch you for a while before they promote you to make sure that your character and not only your character, but what they're bringing you into in, in, in as far as your job requirement. <laughs> so that they won't mess up or jack up. You know, the, the position, especially if it's a high position, you know, they have to sit back for years. Some Sometimes it's for years, for years. And it's not. And we have to understand something just because we, we're 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 in a place. And we feel like cause some people will leave a place because, you know, where they're not using me fast enough. You know, God called me to the nations. And, but, you know, in order for you to be called to the nations, God go deal with your character. God go deal with your character. You know, it's time out. It's time out for, for us actually walking in just our walking in our in our in our gifts and, and exalting the gifts, but never operating into character. And in some in, a, in some of our ministries, understand this. Some of our ministries really carry a strong, uh, a strong level of accountability. Some are are, are greater than others. Some are greater than others, but yet still God still deal with the character. But there's there's certain levels of of grace that that may be um, more more. Um, I don't use the word more. Uh, 
more greater per se, but um, you may you your mantle may 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 be well more. Um, I, I guess I want to use the word greater, but um, but it's not it's not in a way where uh, someone is is less than or, or less important than other. That's not what I'm saying. But God will. God, God would deal with your character according to the grace that's upon your life. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to use me as an example. God, God has given me, um, has given me one part of my ministry is in counseling. So being that, that that's one area that God has given me, I have to have a strong, a strong level of character and integrity. I have to be trustworthy. You know, I can't when people come to me for counsel, especially because the count because of the ministry that God has given me, they also have a piece of of deliverance along with counseling. That means that I have to operate in a stronger area of of of, of accountability and a stronger area of um of being trustworthy. Because God is not going to send people to you that you're going that you're going to tell all their business. You know, so you have to have a strong level of, of accountability where you're not going around telling people business, where you know how to hold water, that, that when people begin to come to you about um, their, their personal circumstances in their life, especially when we're dealing with the area of deliverance, you know, you, you got to be careful and even who you bring alongside in the ministry along with you because of because there's so much confidentiality and the other reason the other way God revealed this area to me was when I was working at um working in manufacturing and God began to uh promote me in the area of human resources and so there was things that was that was about you know certain things about our employees that I was not um that I was not able to share I was, and I had to be careful with the level of information that I had received. So I had to be found trustworthy. Amen. Amen. So that's why I come on today. And I'm talking about very talking about this area of of um of uh, of character because it's so very much more. It's so very much needed in this hour. And again, we talk so much about. Excuse me. We talk so much about our gifts. We talk about the area of, of prophetic. We talk about the area of, of the apostolic walking in a fivefold ministry and walking in areas of business. And we hear all these prophetic words and everything, but we never hear um, how God really wants to deal with us. Again, you can, you can have a great prophecy, but God has to align your character. He has to align our character also with the prophetic word for him to bring to pass. Because again, there, there's even, there's even a level of favor that God gives you because of the level of character that you carry. The level of character that you carry. And why do I also say this? Because also in my own life, I've been places. Let me tell you something. I've been places where I never shared who I was. I, I never shared what I walk in. I never, I never, especially when going to different, to a different, um, God may send me to a different state or he may send me um, to go and do ministry in, in another region. I never tell who I am. I never go into a place and say, I'm apostle so-and-so. I'm prophet so I never go in and tell those areas why. Because the thing about it is that if God wants you to be known, he's going to make you known. <laughs> you, you know, we don't, we don't have to do all these, all these announcements. You know, especially when God has, when there's mm -hmm. favor, blessings and favor to you also, apostle, you know, we have to understand this. We have to understand this, that when the favor of God is upon your life, you don't have to announce who you are. You don't have to, you don't have to announce who you are when the favor of God is upon your life. Because again, I've been places that people did not know what I, what I walked in, but the favor of God showed up. God, God favored me with the people in a community. And I didn't have to tell them that I was apostle so-and-so. You know, we got we have to, we have to understand this. We have to be careful even in certain areas. Come on. We got to be careful even in certain areas. And we have to know how to hide. <laughs> we have to know how to hide in, 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 in protection and, and allowing God to protect us. Because if not, we have to understand something. Demons know who you are. Principalities know who you are. You know, they know, they know you're coming. Come on. They know you're coming. So, so you don't have to make an announcement. It's already announced in the spirit realm of who you are. <laughs> 
Sometimes, sometimes we tell too much and saying that most of the time we're in our flesh because we want to, we want to, we want to make ourselves known, <laughs> you know, but that, but that is the work of the Lord. The Lord wants you to be made known. He's going to be the one to make you known. Not, not, we don't have to do it. You know, we, we don't have to, we don't have to do any of it. We don't have to exalt ourselves. The scripture tells us that when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God in due season, he will exalt us. He'll be the one to take us up. We don't do it. God is the promoter. He's the one that promotes us. All we have to do is come into alignment and come into agreement with, with the Holy Spirit and allow God to do the work on the inside of us. And in due season, he is the one that promotes us. We don't have to do it. We operate too much in our flesh and then we get mad <laughs> when, when someone actually walking in the spirit, you know, tell us off. <laughs> and because you know, we got to we, we have to be delivered. You know, we, we have to we have to be delivered from our flesh, from our flesh, the flesh of the, the flesh of the eyes, the, the, the flesh of the of the the. the the, excuse me, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. We have to be delivered from that. We have to be delivered. If God is going to use us like he wants to use us in this hour, we have to be delivered from those areas of flesh and those fleshly tendencies, those fleshly tendencies of promoting ourselves, putting ourselves out there, having to do this. It's just like, for instance, just like being in a business. Starting a business, and we, and you know, we always hear, you know, you got it, you got to put your business out there for people to know that you that you're here. But again, if the hand of God is upon your life, <laughs> you won't have to make yourself known. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't let God. I tell people all the time, let God do the elevating. Let God, because what happens when God is the one that's doing the elevating, you are protected. If you don't elevate and you're not protected, God, God is not obligated to, to, <laughs> to protect you when you operate in self. God is not obligated, not obligated to protect. Now there's mercy. <laughs> God, God would extend his mercy. However, we have to understand coming into, you know, when, 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 when God wants to cover you, it's his grace. That's his grace. Stand in your grace. Operating in your grace. Because once you come, the thing about it is this. When you come out of the grace of God, you're no longer protected. Coming out of, out of what God has called you to walk in. And this is something that the Holy Spirit began to tell me earlier. Is that if the enemy, listen. That's why we have to be careful with, with certain doors of opportunities that's being open. Every door is not God. You know, and we have to be careful because sometimes as soon as a door open, oh my God, this got, this got to be Jesus, you know, but we have to understand, we have to begin to, that's why it's important for us to spend time in the secret place in this hour because the enemy is becoming more cunning. He's becoming more crafty. And so it's very important that we spend time in the secret place that we will know exactly where our grace is because the enemy, listen, the enemy will do anything he can to get you outside of the grace in which, which God has put you in or which God has given you. And if, if the enemy can get you outside of your grace, then he can attack your character. That's why it's important to guard against certain doors different doors of opportunities that we think that is God that look like God. Ask God, ask the Holy Spirit. There's nothing wrong with telling the person, look, I talk to you, look, I get back with you. <laughs> you know, I get back with you on this. This may not be a, a door of opportunity that God want me to, to walk in. You know what I'm saying? So it's okay to tell people, you know, it's okay to tell people, look, this is not an opportunity for me. It's not a door of opportunity for me. So we, so again, we have to be careful with these particular areas because, because if the enemy can get you to, 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 to walk in a door that God did not, um, did not ordain for you to walk in, then the enemy can attack your character because now you else, you are operating outside of your grace. That's how the enemy can assassinate your character. And if your character is assassinated, if your character is assassin, 
then guess what? Nobody's gonna nobody is gonna listen to you, or nobody is going even when it comes to your gifts. They they're not gonna pay no attention to what God has given you. Why? Because now because the enemy have assassinated your character. That's what the enemy does. He he wants to assassinate your character. Anytime you have something that's really truly benefiting to the kingdom of God, the enemy gonna send people to assassinate your character. The devil is not after your gifts. Check it. The devil is not after your gifts. He's after your character. He's after your character. The devil have many people operating in the gifts. We see it all throughout the body of Christ. They operate in their gifts. However, look at their character. The character is in the basement. <laughs> you know? And so that so so the devil don't care. He don't care nothing about about your gifts. And and that's why we have to be careful that we're not tainted. That was something that God really kept me, really preserved me from from year years ago. There were times when people tell me, you know, you you why are you still at that church? And why are you still going to Bible study? And why are you still doing this? All that words you got on inside of you, you should be starting your own church by now. You should, you know, God calling you, you know, you're apostolic and all this and that and God is called and you know what the Holy Spirit never spoke to me about leaving the church he never spoke to me God was like no I release you when I tell you when you are released and so many people they were going out on their own I, yeah I'm gonna tell it there were some people that were going out on their own you know where it's time and I feel like it's time for me to start pastoring but the Holy Spirit was like no it's not time for you to go out and even thank God for my leaders <laughs> and, and you know I had some excellent leaders you know, they really operate in the place of when they, they, cause they didn't tell me, I, it wasn't a spirit of control. This is something that, that we have to begin to discern. Everything is not the spirit of control. Everybody's not trying to control you. You know, there, there's some people that actually love you enough to, to keep you protected. So they're going to tell you it's not time, daughter, it's not time. And you know, you know, when they love you, when people truly love you, they're going to give you truth. And when, when they tell you, look, it ain't time. It's not like they're telling you they're like they're trying to hold you back. Some people in the body of Christ have, have gotten, has really been mad and angry at leaders because they feel like, you know, where you trying to hold me back. No, that leader is literally there trying to protect you. You know, there are some of us that actually love the sheep. <laughs> we love the sheep and we know what's out there. We, we know how it's easy to get out there and get and be entangled. So, so, so God will have people around you that's going to tell you the truth and say, listen, you don't you go out there. There's a lot of, a lot of wolves out there that they waiting on you, you know, and that's so true as you go about, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot of things that's out there that is waiting on you. That's why it's important that you, that we move in the timing in which God tell us to move in. You know, we don't want any hiccups in this hour. We don't, we don't want, we don't want any hiccups. You know, we want to move in the timing of God. And especially in this hour, God has given us great strategy. This hour, we're not moving the same way that we moved last, last, um, last season, last hour. We're now in a new hour. We're now in a new hour of grace, of greater grace. And so now God has given us greater wisdom. He's given us a greater insight. He's, he's given us a, a greater level of revelation. God has given us a greater level of strategy. Again, we cannot move the same way that we moved years ago. That we, you know, that we moved years ago. We have to begin to walk in because we're going to have to stay covered in this hour. We have to stay covered. There's too much that's going to be exposed. Listen, there's too much that's going to be exposed in this hour. Come on. You know, and we have to be careful that we're not entangled. Just because somebody say they're gifted. Just because somebody have a level of ministry. You know, because you have to understand something. God will begin to, God will begin to, to reveal in the spirit realm what's going on behind the scenes of that ministry. If you, if you stick in a secret place. God began to reveal there's nothing here. There's nothing that's done in the dark that shall not be revealed. You know, so God will, God will make sure that, that he would, that he will reveal um, certain things to you so that you will not be entangled. So God, God will protect you, you know, and then there's also times when God would not allow you to go certain. There was times that, that people were calling me to come over to certain places and the Holy Spirit, God never provided for me to go. And I'm going to tell you something today. I am thankful that he didn't. <laughs> I'm thankful. 
You know, I'm thank be thankful for the wisdom of God. Trust the wisdom of God. The scripture tells us, you know, to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge him. And he'll direct our paths in all of our ways, not in some of our ways, not in the ways that we want to go. But God said in all of our ways, we acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. He will keep us from going down the wrong, the wrong path. He will keep us from connecting to the wrong people. When we put him first, when we put him first. It's important that we put him first. Hallelujah. We have to put him first. We have to, we have to put him first in everything in this hour. Everything, everything. There's so much that I know I've seen that I, I know I don't expound on openly because it's not for public, um, for, for anything, for it, for it to be publicly known. But there's things that God has revealed to me in secret, you know, that I'm like, God, I'm, uh, you know, thankful, 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 you know, but in time, in due time, those areas will be exposed. Hmm. So, so again, be careful in, in your, in your connections in this hour. And, and that's an area that I've been speaking on for years. I've been speaking on covenant for a long time. This is not something that I just started talking on um, this year or, or last year per se or recently. I've been speaking on covenant, being, being mindful about your covenant relationships for a long time. And not the covenant with everything. Not the covenant. We cannot covenant because there's sometimes there are things that's going on in other people's lives and you're and you become guilty by association. Thank you all for coming on. Bless, blessings to all of you. You can be guilty by association, <laughs> you know, you know, you may, you may, you may not be doing the deed, but the fact that you are around them, you know, you know, some of us has been out there in the world, <laughs> blessings and favor to all of you, you know, some of, some of us that's been out there in the world, you know, you know, when you got in that car with that person, you weren't supposed to be in there. I remember, look, I'm going to talk about me today. You know, <laughs> I remember years ago, I got in a car. Didn't even know what they was going to do. It was a group of guys and I was and I was hanging out with a best friend of mine at that time. I was hanging out with a best friend and her and I, we had just finished going to this party and we needed a ride home. And she, and she had, she had some friends and she was like, Hey, let's get in the car with them. You know, they'll give us a ride home. And we got in the car with them and guess what they was great to go do. They was great to go do a, um, a shooting. A drive-by. And they actually told us, let me tell you about the grace of God. They told us to get out the car. They told us to get out of the car because they knew what they were ready to go do. Talk about protection. <laughs> and, and you know what? It's the same, it's the same way. You know, you can be guilty about you can be in the wrong place, you know, and guilty by association. You know what I'm saying? And so the favor and grace of God, hallelujah, the great, the favor and grace, the, the mercy of God, you know. <laughs> You know, he will spare us. And when God tell us to, 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 to disconnect is, is, and actually how, you know, a lot of times, Hey, blessing. Thank you for coming on. You know, um, a lot of times is this, a lot of times is this, sometimes we don't know what's going on, on the other side. And so what God, what God would do, you know, God, God himself would break off things. That's not right. He will break off these different covenants that is not leading us into the wrong, into the right path. God will do it himself. And that's why I'm going to go to, got to go into the scriptures. And I come back, I'm talking again, I'm talking about character. Because it's really important that we walk in character in this hour. You know, making sure that we don't have our hands in the cookie jar. <laughs> you know, <laughs> making sure we're doing things. We have, we have to do things right. And God, and, and another thing I want to say is this, God will always provide, you know, we don't have to do, we don't have to do anything corrupt. You know, we don't have to lie and, and be deceiving in order to gain. We don't have to do that. We do things right. And just like it was just, what was just posted with just, just posted with Matthew 6, when we seek you first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his, his way of doing things, God would do all the adding. So we don't, so we don't have to go around begging. We don't have to go around coming up with all kinds of schemes and Facebook schemes and so forth and coming up with all these different ideas that's not from God. And so we, so that we can, so that we can um, obtain, you know, wealth or, or anything, you know, that we're trying to get, we don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. When the scripture tells us in Psalms um, 23, that the Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. So when he, so when he is our Lord, because we have to make God Lord, you know, some of us haven't made God, we haven't made the, we haven't made Jesus Lord over our life. He's our Savior, but he's not Lord. When he become Lord, that means he's obligated. Come on. He's obligated to take care of you. That means you don't do anything outside of his Lordship that's over your life. <laughs> that's a that's a powerful scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. That means nobody else can shepherd me but the Lord. Hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for nothing. I shall not want. I shall not want those things that the Gentiles seek after. I don't have to chase after that. Why? Because those things are being added to me. Those things are being added. And even in this time, since I'm talking about the area of of, of adding. You know, be careful with your spending habits in this hour. Be very careful in, in, in how you spend. You know, just because you have the money doesn't mean you have to spend the money. And I know some of us have carried that level of wisdom. So I'm just sharing that because some of us, you know, some that may that may come on my, my live after the after this um after the live need to hear that. You know, just because you know, just because you have it. You know, in your bank account or at your disposal, understand something. You don't have to spend it. You know, you use um, use wisdom in this hour. Don't be wasteful. There's some of us that's waste that's wasteful. You know, we wasteful. And so, you know, make sure you don't waste anything. So you have to, you know, use wisdom in that area and understand that when we when we when we um you know take care about those things that you need. But as long as you seek in the kingdom, God is going to take care of your wants. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm a living witness of that. He'll, he'll take care of your wants. The scripture I was going to. <laughs> he'll take care of your wants. So buy those things that you need. Use wisdom in this hour. It's going to be necessary. It's going to be very necessary. Because things are... We, we think things have gotten tight. Things are going to get tight. But at the same time, we have to use wisdom. And yes, you know, God does supply all of our needs, you know, and no, you know, we don't, we, we don't want to have a, this is not a poverty mindset. Cause sometimes people say, well, you know, you're supposed to, you know, eat the good of the land, but God has given us wisdom as well. You know, God has given us wisdom. And so we have to, you know, you have to be careful. We have to be we have to be mindful um, of the time that we're in and not to be a, some of us need to be delivered from being an overspender. We are we are emotional spenders. So we have to be delivered from that. And we also are emotional eaters. So we got to be delivered from that, too. <laughs> we have to be delivered in our emotions. That's why I also talk about um, the area of, re of restoration. That's why restoration is also important in this hour as well, because a lot of times we talk about restoration in the area of um of just um, of, of of material things, but we don't talk about restoration in our whole man and in our in our emotions being restored. And some of us need to be restored in our emotions, and some of us need to be restored in our mental capacity. You know how we think, our psychological um, areas in our, in our mind got to be restored. And so God wants to restore our full our full man and not just our pockets. You know, or the things that you know that where the, the, the devil stole, but the, but the enemy just didn't steal those things that mater that's material um that's that is material you know you know there are certain things in in that that you know of dealing the areas of your heart of our heart so again god wants to begin to work in those areas and again that just that goes back to going back into the area of our of our character so i'm gonna go to john the 15th chapter real quick and I'm going to get back into talking about the area of our character. Just wanted to go in and just share those areas as well. Because I believe those areas is necessary. Excuse me. To share in this time. And just to give us wisdom keys. These Some of these areas is wisdom keys. And how we are to operate. And how we are to use strategy in this hour that we're in. And I had to learn this. God, God took me down this path of. About uh, for four years, for four years straight, God took me down this path because I was I was that one, and I shared this before. I was that one. Um, I've been working, you know, all you know from 
God knows, you know. But when I first started in, in manufacturing, I was only 20 years old. So I was used to always making money. But I was, even though I had jobs before then, but I was, but from the time that I had started and working in manufacturing, I was always used to making money. I had money. I knew how to turn money. I knew how to, I knew how to get money. I knew how to, you know, I knew how to flip money. If I needed money, I knew how to do it. You know, and so the right way, it wasn't the wrong way, but you know, it, it was over a period of time where I began to come in the area of independency, being independent, you know, being independent. So when God began to, um, begin to shift my life and begin to, um, begin to release me to go in different places, I had to learn how to trust God. I had to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. I had to learn literally, you know, even though I trusted God when I was, when, when I, when I was employed, you know, in, in business and, you know, in manufacturing all those years, yes, I trusted God then, but God had taken my, had to take my trust to another level in him. And so when God began to release me to send me out to different places, I had to trust God. That means I had to pray things into existence and I had to fast and pray things into existence in order for, for certain things, for certain needs to be met, for me to really begin to see that level of glory. I had to walk into those areas of faith. So there were times where God shut certain doors and said, no, I don't want you going that way because I need for you to learn how to walk in a greater level of faith, especially in this hour that we're in. And it's okay when God began to send you or begin to bring you to different places in him that so God can elevate your faith so that you'll begin to walk in a greater dimension because it's going to be necessary in this hour. A lot of times what we do, we talk about miracle signs and wonders, but understand something about miracles. So that people don't understand something about miracles. Miracles have nothing to do with, with, um, with flesh. Okay. And so God has to, you know, there are times in a miracle where God brings forth a miracle is only during times that it, that is, that is, um, I want to say that, that is that I'm trying to find the right word to use. Um, some, sometimes, God, God does miracles during times when it, when, when nothing else can be done. Nothing else can be done with that situation. So it takes God to intervene. So that, so we're talking in the area of miracles. Thank you for coming on. Bless you. Thank you for, um, thank you for coming on. I appreciate the grace that's upon your life. Amen. And, um, so, so God, God, you know, we talk about those areas of, of miracles, but we don't want to walk through what it what it really costs costs us to walk in that dimension of miracles, miracle signs and wonders. Amen. So God would teach us, but again, that comes and also comes in area of character, coming in area of character. So I'm going to John the 15th chapter. And this is what I was talking about earlier that, you know, again, I talked about this before about we don't, you don't have to ever cut anybody off. You don't have to cut anybody off. And the reason why we don't have to cut anybody off is because when we, when we, when we take on, um, John the 15th chapter, because God does it himself. We don't have a lot of stuff that we're trying to do in our flesh. We don't have to do it if we get in the spirit. If we get, if we seek God, God will do it. God, a lot of stuff again, we're doing too much in our flesh, but we're not, we're not remaining postured in the spirit. Those that are sons of God, those that are led by the spirit are sons of God, sons of God. Amen. Thank you all for coming on. Blessings and favor. Uh, John 15 chapter, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. He does the pruning. He does the pruning. He is the one that's doing the pruning. You are already clean to the word which I have spoken to you. Remain in me. Some, some, um, I know the King James Virgin said, abide in me and I in you. But this, this version, let's see, this is the modern English version. It said, remain in me as I also remain in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it remains in the vine. Neither can you, lest you, lest you remain in me. I'm used to saying abide in me. 
and the vine and you are the, you are the branches. He who remains in me and I in him bear forth much, much, much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man does not remain in me, he is thrown out as a branch and withers. And they gather them and burn them into the fire and they are burnt. If you remain in me, if you abide in me and my words remain in you, you will ask you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. So will you be my disciple? So again, some of these things that we saying that we're doing, if we abide in him, God will do it himself. If we abide in him. Amen. So I'm going to also read the scripture. Let's go to um, Proverbs 22 and 1. Talk about, I came on talking about character, but there's some other areas that the Lord want me to expound on. I'm talking about character, um, Proverbs 22 and 1. A good name, a character is, is, is rather to be chosen than great riches and having and loving favor, excuse me, rather than silver and gold. So we, so we have to choose, choose character over everything. Because many things are going to be given. Many things is going to come. Blessings and favor. Thank you all for coming on. Many things are going to be handed to you. Many things are going to be handed to us. But we have to walk in character. And, and there are certain times, get this, there are certain times because of the level of character that you walk in. There are certain things that's going to cost you. But you're going to reap a harvest on the other side. There's certain times that I had to, that I had to walk away from certain things because I refused to allow my character to be at stake. So there were times that I had to walk away and say, no, I don't want that. Or, or there are times even in, in dealing with a position on a job, you know, sometimes your character, people can, you know, the enemy can try to put you in, in a position that, that would, that would, um, that would bring, um, that would bring a, um, a mark. On your character, and you have to choose whether I want to stay on this job, or whether I, I or whether I want to, you know, walk in character. And there are times that you want to have to walk away from something. There are times you may have to walk away from a ministry. There are times you may have to walk away from friendships. You know, so that so so that your character, you know, so that you can continue to walk in character. We have to walk in character. Amen. We have to walk in it. We have to walk in. You know, we have to, we cannot be stuck in the area of always talking about gifts, but we must walk into the character, in, in character, in the character of God. God is a God of character. And we see this all the time throughout scripture. God is a God that not only perform, you know, he, he perform, but he also is a God of character. He's a God of his word. He's a God of integrity. We can, when God speak, we can bank on it. You know, we can bank on it because God, God is, 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 is God is integral. You, you know, God's going to carry out his word. You know, God is going to do what he said. And so for, and so you think God wants us to be, you know, wants to, wants to be outside of that, outside of walking in character. No, God wants us to walk in character. God, God has given us, even when it talks about, um, the fruit of the spirit, those are character traits of the spirit and we have to walk in those areas since I'm talking about it Galatians <laughs> those that those, you know those things that are his character that exemplify him who he is we have to be a people of character we have to be a people of our word you know keep our word learn how to keep our word and that's something that years ago, even when I was a young kid, I couldn't stand for somebody to tell me something that, and then they turn around and don't do it. That thing would tick me off, you know, you know. And so, so you know that and over time, I understood why I felt like that. Why? Because we got to be a people of our word. If we tell somebody to go do something, we need to do it. If we're not going to do it, then we don't need to say nothing at all. I tell people all the time, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Galatians, the fifth chapter. Talk about the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Those who are, are Christ have crucified the flesh and his passions and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. So again, the fruit of the spirit. It is the character of Christ. 
You know, and we are to, to exemplify those areas. And we are to walk in, walk in character when it comes to our business dealings. Walk in character when it comes to our business dealings as well. <laughs> and in, the, you know, the book of Proverbs is an excellent book. I've been reading the book of Proverbs forever. The book of Proverbs is an excellent book, especially when it comes to doing business dealings. Proverbs, the 10th chapter, the ninth verse, almost done. He who walks uprightly walks surely, but he who perverts his ways will be known. So we are to walk upright. The scripture tells us that when we walk upright, no good thing will he withhold from us that walk upright before him. The walk, walking in his character, walking in, walking in character. You know, some people fight, some people fight against the message of character, but we have to walk in character in order for us, to, especially when it comes to areas of ministry. It's not all about the gifts, even though God has given us gifts again. But God also wants us to walk in character. Keep our lips from lying. Some of us have the spirit of lying on our tongue. But again, Especially in being and walking in the office of a prophet. Come on, you can't be releasing truth one day and the accuracy of the word, and then tomorrow you're lying and you're being deceiving. No, that's not that's not God. That's not God. And we have to begin, we got to begin to be in a, be accountable. You know what I'm saying? We got this stuff that's going on in our life. We got to begin to say, God, deal with those areas in me. Instead of allowing, you know, there are times that, you know, we love to hang around people that's going to, that's going to, that's going to be comfortable with our mess and tell us, no, don't do this. You know, that's not right. You need a brother and sister in your life. You need a sister and brother of Christ in your life. That's going to tell you about yourself. That's going to give you the naked truth. <laughs> I had a lot of, <laughs> some people may get mad. They might get mad, but they'll be okay. <laughs> that's what that's why I said earlier, talking about those that God has given me over the years. They won't, they was not playing with me. I had some tough people. <laughs> I had some I had some tough mentors. I had some tough leaders that told me about myself. Get this in, get this. If you want this promotion, you got to do A, B, C, and D. They, you know, I wasn't being promoted because I knew how to just do my job. The only way I was being promoted as well, it had a lot to do with my character. In areas in ministry. I remember one time the Lord had, had given me an opportunity with this ministry. And I remember the Holy Spirit telling me, the Holy Spirit told me that night. He said, make sure you're on time. Make sure you're on time. Don't show up late. This was the key. So when I went, so when I showed up on time, what ended up happening, God ended up with that ministry. God began to open up more opportunities along with that ministry over the years. And then when it's time for me to need, you know, a place to do a conference, guess what? I was able to go to that ministry and, 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 and to use their church for free. So, so walking in character can open up, open up great, different, great opportunities, great doors for you. When you walk in integrity and walk in, 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 um, in character and integrity. And that's something that we, again, we don't want to talk about. We just want to talk about the gifts making room for you. And yes, your gift will make room for you because it was the gift that, that, that leader saw, but it was also the character that kept those doors being um, being open over and over and over again over the years. And God began to just give me so many different areas to begin to operate in and begin to really walk in. And, and it wasn't just looking at any time something was, was made known. It was because of the character that God that God had brought me into. Always character. Always, always walking character with the gifts of God. And that's how God began to open up more doors. And God will continue to give you favor. He'll, he'll, he'll give you favor with people, with strangers that you don't, that you don't even think you will have favor with. Just in walking in character. 
And I've shared this numerous of times on my live when I talked about the areas of business and how God began to really give me favor in the business world. But again, it comes with having, 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 um, having right character with people, you know, especially, you know, especially when people are people of integrity. When when you're gonna when you're gonna do real business with with people with integrity, they're looking at they they're just not looking at what you can bring to the table. They're also looking at your your, your how you know your response, your character in certain areas. You know, people a lot of times people don't want to bring you into places because of your character. If your character stinks, they don't want to bring you into certain areas. They don't want to fool with you. Amen. Amen. So I just want to come on and do a live on today. <laughs> live on talking about character and the gifts and why character is extremely important. And to share with you the different strategies that God has given us for this hour and to be wise. You know, God has given us great wisdom in this hour. So just, let's just make sure that we walk in the countenance of um, walking in what God is telling us to walk in in this hour. And as long as we're doing what God called us to do, as long as we're being obedient, we've been willing and obedient, we need to go to the land. As long as we remain in posture with the Lord, according to Psalms 91, in the secret place of the Most High. Amen. God will continue to pour into us and he'll continue to show us what we need to do and show us what we don't, you know, what we don't need to do. Because God is gracious. He love us. We have to remember that he love us no matter what. God love us no matter if you're going through the process, a process right now. Remember, God, God love us. God love us enough to, you know, the word tells us that God love, you know, he love us to correct us. Because if he, if, he if he didn't love us, if he didn't correct us, you know what I'm saying? We, we don't belong to him. So God love us enough to correct us, to correct those areas in our life, those areas that, 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 that may be hindering us from moving into our next. You know, God is faithful. He, he doesn't give up on us. He doesn't throw in a towel on us. He keep working on us. He keep working on us and he keep working with us because that's his love. He love us. He, he, he care for us. You know, and as long as we remember that and keep that in our for in our forefront, you know, and knowing, okay, I may be going through this, it may be hard, it may be difficult, maybe a process, it may be preparation for 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 greater. But because God loved me, God is doing this in me in my life. Amen. Amen. So thank you all for coming on. Blessings and favor. May the peace of God continue to rule and reign over you in this time and this hour. And I will be coming back on again as the Lord lead. So once again, as I always say, blessings and favor. And have a wonderful night, morning, wherever you're located around the world. And someone from Ghana, come on. Um, thank you for coming on. Blessings and favor for all of you, all of you in your respected places. I honor and I respect you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.